Look, I played with DJ in San Francisco yep. when he was a rookie. I am perfectly fine with the confidence. You got to believe in yourself. You got to believe if that's the standard. I mean, those two defenses are the only two defenses in the history of the league to lead the league in takeaways, yards a game, and points. So it's it's high standards, but it's you holding the whole defense to that standard. And if everybody's all right with it, then I'm good with it. But it's if you don't live up to those standards, that's when things get get rocky. And everybody, when we were going after those things, we weren't we weren't thinking about, hey, you know, we got to be compared to these guys, or we're going after these. We were thinking about executing at a really high level, trusting each other, being with one another every game, every moment, play by play, play by play, making sure we're locked in and we're playing as hard as we can for one another. It was about togetherness. It wasn't about being compared to anybody. But I appreciate the respect and 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 the standard that the, he's holding his team to. Yeah, I, I, I slow it down, little fella. Slow, slow it down, little fella. I mean, I get it. DJ Reed is hyped about it. The hard knocks, New York City, all those got Aaron Rodgers, all those sort of things. Everybody talking to Aaron Rodgers. He wasn't even born to even know anything about the '85 Bears. Okay, no. I believe he right. was born in like '96. No. And so I would ask him, who even played on the '85 Bears? Give me one guy. <laughs> Just give me one but name. I like he know. But, I like but, him knowing the history. Yeah, that's fine. That, that, that's I, fine, I, playmaker. I like he he knows know the history. history. But let me tell you this though: when you start talking about championship defenses, I played on a team with a championship defense. Mm, okay? Did. okay, with four Hall of Famers it, and a time. fifth to come. All time. Yeah. Okay? You're all time. You're talking about 2002 Tampa Bay. 2002 Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Yeah. When you got Derrick Brooks and Rondé Barber and John right. Lynch and Warren Sapp, those are just four mm. Hall of Famers with Simeon Rice, yeah. with, with right. Simeon Rice sitting there right. who should be in the Hall of Fame, right. but because of his personal attitude, he's got to sit and wait for a little bit. Right. Right. So that'll be five guys. Yep. The Jets ain't got five guys on this defense. Not yeah, only that. The key. Not, not, not only that. You got to win a championship. Right. Now, okay, I, I everybody, uh, uh, the Bears, the Bucks, Seattle, they all won championships, yeah, all, man. All finished the deal. Right. Okay, they were, number, right. they were number one in yards per game allowed. Okay, uh, 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 scoring defenses, right? They were number one in yards per game allowed. Points per game allowed. Okay? Takeaway, Seattle was one, the Bears were two. Third down percentage, the Bears was two, the Bucks was three. That's a lot. They got a lot to accomplish before you can start really saying that. I'm with that. You just got a lot. It's, 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 it's cool to beat okay. your chest, but it got a lot to go. Well, well, and there's a lot of a lot of things and a lot of people talking about Aaron Rodgers. So now let's make sure we understand there's a defense here. We'll get okay. early looks at it. Fair we'll get enough. early looks because they start yep. with the Bills and mm -hmm. the Cowboys. Mm -hmm. We'll get early looks mm -hmm. at that great defense and, yep. and, and see what they do. I love that the kid is saying it. That's fine. I love that the kid is saying it, but now let's talk through this too. Over the years, what we've seen and what I thought about when I saw this, I said, man, what have I see? What do I see when I see historically great defenses? I see those superstar or almost Hall of Famers on yes. each level of that defense. Yes. You see one on the line. You see one at the linebacker position. You see one in the secondary. Mm. You can say what you want. The Jets has to be, they have the beginnings of this. Yes. That fella, Quentin Williams up front, they do. that young boy, that young brother, Sauce oh, Gardner in the back. Yeah. Now, now they got C.J. Mosley in the middle, a little older, he's 32 years old, a little older, but they got the makings of it they do. right here, right now. If they can show up, make plays, and, and, and it has to end with a Super Bowl, you got a chance. If they had a younger uh, a younger middle backer, I'm, I'll be saying, yeah, they can mm -hmm. get there because I'll mm -hmm. see those guys with one th with, with time to grow. And let me tell you the big thing I said when I saw this because I liken it to that defense you talked about, Sap Brooks and Lynch. And let me tell you why I liken it. That big fella, Quentin Williams, that big fella, he's the motor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see him on hard knocks talking about, I think I got 20 sacks in there. He's the motor. Well, and when you got the big fella, the motor, like Sap was the motor, you won't have to get the fat boy running. He already coming. You got everything on that defense mm -hmm. because it starts up front. If you got the big fella being the motor, you got a chance at being a historically great <laughs> defense. They just got to show, show it up. These mm -hmm. things, and Richard can attest to this because he played defense in Seattle and they was one of the greats. It doesn't happen overnight, man. No, no. that's what I'm saying. It does it not, does not happen saying. overnight. That's what I'm saying. Our but they got, they, they got defense, some ingredients. Our Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense predominantly drafted by uh, Tony Dungy and Rich McKay. Yep. That thing developed over time. Right. It did. And when yeah. it hit, yeah. mm -hmm. it was a whole nother story. It hit. Derrick Brooks used to come to me and say, 19, 19. You know how Brooks uh, but Bo, Bo uh, say, 19, uh, just get me nine, man. That's all, all I need you to do is get me nine. <laughs> just get us nine and we good. <laughs>
Yo, don't mm -hmm. you, that, that was the best times when you got guys later, because, hey, Charles Haley was, because I asked me, how many, Mike? I mean, I said, what do they got? He said, they won't have 15 points. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? When you, when you have that kind of thing, and then those checks and balances on the football field, the Jets can create that. Yeah. That's what this kid is talking about. If the Jets can create that, well, okay, we expect this when we play. And, and, and Aaron Rodgers in the offense said, we will give you this when we play. Yeah. You can see something great yeah, happen. I just, skip, I I just hope that he has not bit off more than he can chew. By talking about it? It's New, in York. New York. It's New York, okay. man. Yeah. You know how to go. All right, go. so tonight is the final episode of Hard Knocks. To me, this is another symptom of being on Hard Knocks, speaking of 24 7 cameras in your face right. and behind your back. DJ, to me, is living up to his initials first name because he is DJing because he's so full of himself now that he's starting to think, well, wait a second, we, we, it's like all the Jets. They feel entitled and empowered because the cameras are there. It's like they've already won something when they have won. They, they went 7-10 and 10 last year. I give you this. The defense was fourth in points allowed yeah. and fourth in yards right, allowed. Right, so that's, right, right. To, to your point, they're on the verge of becoming Second very good, yards, maybe, right? maybe great. But the point is, I think he did do his homework because he mentioned 85 and 86. I thought the 86 defense was a little better than even the 85 that won the Super Bowl, obviously. But I was very close to a lot of those players and coaches in 85. And trust me, and no, no offense to Richard, because their secondary was better at the Legion of Boom. But, but this thing, and it's even before you guys' time, but... This thing was a force of nature, this 85-46 defense, because yeah, yeah, no, yeah. no one had done this before. It was a scheme right named after Doug Plank, Plank, who had then retired. Right. He was played safety for him, but it, it, do, do you know the 46? It came from everywhere. They Ooh. were coming from places that you'd never seen them come from before. They had three Hall of Famers, obviously Samurai Mike and Mike Sing Singletary, and then Richard Dent and Dan Hampton, but the, it was just loaded with star power. And they psychologically crushed you in ways I don't even think the Legion of Boom or the 2002 or the Ray Lewis defense in 2000 crushed people psychologically. You just couldn't figure out how to stop them. They, the, and Dan Marino, one of the great throwers of the football we've ever seen, finally got them on Monday Night Football in Miami. Yeah. But that was the only th after that. You, you look at their stats, and their stats are the greatest ever. And by the yeah. way, don't, don't underestimate the old... The, the Joe, mean Joe Green's defenses in Pittsburgh, those were up there in this echelon also because they had Hall of Famers I remember like that game crazy. Skip, they was throwing Ooh. those scene routes. Oh, that. Was yeah, it, I mean, it was yeah, spectacular. I remember that game. Yeah. I, I mean, I, Skip, I, 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 yeah. it, was a, it was a different... It was a different time of playing football back then, it, it too. I wish was. we could play against those quarterbacks where, where, you, where you could touch them up a little bit, you could you, touch you, the receivers you, up a little bit. You, you know, I wish we could play in that day and down. age, but yep. we've had to play in this day and age where you can't touch them, you can't grab them, you can't hit the quarterback, you got to escort them to the ground, and we were still able to be dominant. That's the day and age they're playing in. They have to be able to play under these sets of rules. Yeah. And, and like you said, it wasn't built overnight. I mean, we were the number one scoring defense for the entire time I was there. I think it from 2012 to 17 or something like that. And so you got to have consistency, and the consistency starts. And Salah knows something about that because he was at, there at the beginning yep. when it was built with Gus Bradley. Gus Bradley yep. was there in 2011, and he was there in 2012 with us before they went to Jacksonville. So he knows what it looks like, and he built it from the front to the back. He built the front because we definitely had great pass rushers. We had C Cliff Averill. We had Michael Bennett. We had Chris Clemens. We had Bruce Irvin when he was young. We talked about him before. Um, we had a lot of pass rushers, and that's what they building in, in, in New York. They're building an abundance of pass rushers so they can just keep rotating, keep rotating. They have a good secondary. They have Sauce Gardner, who was an all-pro last year, DJ Reed. So they have the ingredients, like Mike says. They have all the ingredients. And the guy running the show, Robert Sala, was there when we put it all together. So he knows what it's supposed to look like, and I'm sure he's showing them that tape. So that's where it's probably getting into their head that, hey, this is about where it comes together. Year three, my third year in the league, we went to the Super Bowl and won it. We were number one in every category, and we, we never really relented since. And so that's where they're starting to get that. It's like, hey, year three in this scheme, it should start to come together for us the way. But it's, you got to go out there and put it on tape, and you got to do it in the playoffs. We beat Drew Brees in his prime. Held him to 15 points that game. We beat uh, Kaepernick and, and that San Francisco defense. Uh, and then we beat Peyton when they were having an all-time historic year. All, broke every record you can break. And they couldn't, they couldn't break the end zone but once in that Super Bowl. So yep. you talk about performing in the playoffs. That's when you become legendary, like Keith said. You, you become legendary in those championship games and on that run. Well, you know, the thing that I, that, that I guard against for DJ is to understand the city of New York. 
Okay, I don't have a problem with the bravado. It's fine. He can say it and do yeah. it if you believe it. Mm -hmm. But much like you said, Skip, when you sit up and you're on hard knocks, you got one of the all-time great quarterbacks now on your and team, yep. bringing all that light to you, yeah. right. and then you step out and mm -hmm. you consistently are talking about what you're capable of doing and what you yep. can do. I played in New York. Yes, you did. Okay, so I know if you don't do what these people expect you to do, it's not going to end well. So I want to guard against that for the mm -hmm. young man. For him to really understand, yep. the media in New York is not going to be kind to you. Okay. Now, if you go ahead and you, you, you do what you say you're going to do, every restaurant is open for you 24-7. Okay. Okay, they're going to they're do whatever right, you right, need sure. done. He needs to understand that. Okay. One, Expectations one are high. All right. Right, one last thing here, though. Historically great defenses are historically great at stopping the run. The, the, the Jets were 16. At stopping the run. And another right. thing that historically great defenses always do is cause a lot of turnovers. They do. They're yes. 29th in turnovers. Those two areas, yeah. they got to correct. Yeah, now, yeah. they have a chance of correcting them because Aaron Rodgers should put points on the board okay. and give you opportunity right. that you didn't have. Before. And yeah, historic two, defenses take the football away, too. It was 29th. Right, they right, right. That's, that's what we're saying. Not, yeah. you know. Okay, the Bears took it away 54 times in 1985. Last year, the Jets took it away 16 times. 54 to 16? I'm, I'm right, just saying, right, come on right now. There, perfect, Even the, the Legion right. of Boom took it away 29, it. I'm sorry, got 39 it. times, which is ball. high, but 54 times to 16? On top of takeaways, third down efficiency is, is well. You got to get off the field. You got to get off the field. Right, you can't, you can't be in the middle of the now, pack. Now, you got to get I, off the field. Now, I gave them something because it, it, a lot of that is tied to the offense. You know what I mean? So, yeah. so now, now you have an offense that can put points on the board. You're going to have teams teams and more passing situations so you'll get more opportunities. Yep. Team won't be running the ball because hopefully they'll be trying to catch up so you don't have to worry as much about that, that poor rushing. Uh, Here, here's the other number that sticks in my craw. Opening Monday night, it's Bills at Jets. Right. Guess who's favored mm -hmm. in the game? The Bills are favored by two and a half points at the Jets. So the final number here for DJ Reed is you're not even favored to win your opening game. And you're telling me you could be historically great on defense? Well, you got a lot of proving to do. And it starts with them Bills, and then you get the Cowboys. Then you get the Cowboys, and then it goes. There it goes. But it's, you get the, the, it's the perfect right situation the for them to prove themselves okay. because they're facing great, great offenses right. in their division. Miami. Miami and what they got to offer with Tua, they were their firepower is undeniable. They yep. gotta they gotta beat them. You show up against them twice a year, you show up against Buffalo twice a year, you're gonna make your point. But you're gonna def definitely have to show up because Buffalo was the number two scoring, number two offense in the league last year. Mm -hmm. You got Diggs, right. then you got to deal with Tyreek and, and and what they got Waddle and what they got to deal with. So to prove himself, he's gonna have to prove it against some of the best right. week in and well, week out. So first, you gotta hey, the first got three, your shot. The first three or four games is is that that's it's, not chopped liver. I mean, we don't know what New England. We think New England's gonna be yeah. whatever, but I can't count Belichick out just yet. No, okay. but when you think about I mean, when you think good. about the Bills and the Cowboys, we know what they have at the quarterback position. We know the firepower that they have offensively. Then Kansas City is their fourth game. Yeah, and then so, the Eagles come pretty quickly. Right, so right. you, you it's, think it's about that. It's, it's a lot. lot. It, All right. It's a lot in there, and, and we will remind him. Of this, if they don't play yes, great, we that's, the, about, that's, that's the problem right there. Skip, we're we're talking about high octane offenses that put up points. Right. Yep. Kansas City can score. We know the Cowboys can score. Yes, we can. know the Bills can score. Can that's all Cowboys, I'm saying. The Cowboys can what? Man, they scored last year, man. Okay, Stop that's it, that's man. That's what he said. They fired yeah, their offensive coordinator okay, go. after they led the league in scoring. Yeah. Yeah. Playmaker, they fired yeah. the offensive yeah. coordinator after they led the league in scoring. Yeah. What are we doing? So, Richard, I'm going to give you one big point here. If you sign off on DJ Reed as a good kid, I sign off too. So, so I, I'll give you that one, and and I'll give him a little bit of a break because it sounds like he, he won Richard that. over. Yeah. Well, he better show up with the Bills and the yeah. Cowboys. I ain't back. never said he wasn't a good no, person. No, I got it. I, I <laughs> got it.